Hello and welcome to the 11th round of the 2016 PCC Cup Series season and first of an 8 race European tour here at the Rockingham Circuit in the UK. Starting on the pole is Alex Phillips with Barbara Burt on his outside. This is Alex Phillips' third pole of the season uh, and first at a non-super speedway. Uh, the PCC Europe race here yesterday was very chaotic. Uh, many cautions as AJ Canton and Ruby Kasaka there go into the wall. Uh, this was fairly early on in the race, and there's Anders Magnussen and Heike Wenzel piling into it. Uh, both all drivers involved would be okay. There's uh, Edward Carroll getting spun around, former PCC Cup Series competitor, and Ingrid Jane Ambleton had nowhere to go. Alexei Motov, Giampaolo Fini, all piling in. Just huge accidents all around, and uh, Giuseppe Balducci here had the worst ride of any driver. That's Nicholas Marchenkov, Manfred Haas. Alexa Lake was involved, Stuart Buchanan, Arthur Misko, just a huge accident all around, but Leonid Chernov in the number 61 would take the checkered flag in the PCC Europe race, uh, saving his championship bid as it had been on life support at this point. Uh, as we go through the back of the grid, uh, some drivers who ran the PCC Europe race are in this one, Alexa Lake making her debut. Uh, for the Zach Tech Motorsports team. Well, now Matthews Motorsports team, and on the last row is Vincenzo Focasato, who also ran the PCC Europe race. And with that, Alex Phillips will bring the field down to take the green flag here at the Rockingham UK circuit. Uh, getting a pretty good jump over Barbara Burt there on the outside. Brian Gallagher trying to follow suit, trying to move up to second place around Barbara Burt, but Alex Phillips driving the number 71 Thyssen Krupp car. Uh, Thyssen Krupp will be sponsoring this car throughout the European Tour, takes the lead and continues to gain, uh, showing that he is a very versatile driver. Uh, Johnson Racing looking very strong uh, here this week. Here's Tom Wilson and Alina Lazerva end a lap one game together. Alina Lazerva almost goes into the inside wall, the 2014 PCC Cup Series champion. Up in fifth place, having a strong run here today, but uh, that's not looking too great. Here's Brian Gallagher already making a move for the lead on lap number two. I guess that uh, lead wasn't really meant to be for Alex Phillips as he drops back to third now. Barbara Burt holding strong there in second place, though, looking to challenge. But Brian Gallagher on these speedways, man, he is difficult to beat. Uh, but Barbara Burt, Barbara Burt making a move. Mark Burt there up to fourth place as well. And Double B Motorsports. It looks like a fire has been lit under them after... Uh, after that win at 8 Bowl with Barbara Burt. And uh, she's going to keep challenging for the lead. Here's Vinny Focasato running in 41st place. He only out-qualified Ramsey Cockner, which isn't really much of an achievement. But he's in the field. He ran the PCC Europe race to get some oval experience, and uh, that didn't really pan out too well for him. He was well off the pace in that as well. But Vinny Focasato, it's always good to see a new face in the field, and uh, he's doing all right, I suppose. Another debutante, Alexa Lake, also coming from the PCC Europe Series, uh, is faring slightly better. She's running in 36th place. Uh, however, her lap times uh, would put her in the top half of the field, so don't be surprised to see this car running up in the top 20, 25, late in the going. Uh, Alexa Lake, the American, uh, more of an oval racing expert. She's finished very well on the ovals, but uh, has been pretty garbage on the road courses in the Europe Series. Now here's uh, the third driver who's making their debut this year. Uh, well, first start, he attempted to qualify for Mansfield, but this is 2012 PCC Light Series champion Kyle McWulla subbing for the injured Lenny Jacobs. I hope uh, Jacobs recovers soon, but McWulla's running quite well. He's running up in the top 20, although he just lost uh, 21st to Ben Worthington. Uh, he's been running up in the top 20 all week. Uh, hasn't really been much lower than that. Hasn't been much higher either. Uh, Brian Gallagher has p extended his lead on lap by lap number 11 and uh, is really starting to run away with this one, but Barbara Burt still hanging strong back there in second place. Not too far off the pace. Uh, really just hanging in there and here she is two laps later like I said battling for the lead with help from Mark Burt gonna take the bottom line here in turn number one there's a slick patch here in turn number two let's see if she can hold it uh, yes she does looks like uh, Brian Gallagher got up into the marbles there and had to let off the gas that's gonna uh, prevent Mark Burt from being a good drafting partner but uh, Barbara Burt extends her lead now over Brian Gallagher 
Uh, but Gallagher battles back just two laps later, and it, it's just going to be back and forth up front all day long. These guys are very competitive. Here's Kuga Hakai having an unusually strong run. He's up in eighth place. He just got around. Uh, that's Louis Ballard there. And there's Akio Gifu following as well. So uh, Kuga Hakai, every time he's had a good run, it seems that something goes wrong. Whether he crashes like he did at Chicago, or he blows up like he did at... Uh, at 8 bowl, and it looks like we've got a caution out, uh, but Kyuga Hakai having a very strong run up in the top 10. Let's take a look and see what causes this caution. Oh, Kyle McWalla just, oh my goodness, that's James Hewitt involved too. Caution one on lap number 16, and uh, looked like McWalla just forgot to let off for the turn and took out James Hewitt with him. Let's take another look at this, and okay, so it looks like he was running the bottom and Hewitt maybe cut down a little bit, uh, but still, McWalla just did not let up for the turn. Maybe he's used to driving those PCC lights cars, you'll see here. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what happened there. That looked like it was on both drivers. Uh, McWalla just didn't real. McWalla had a good head of steam, and Hewitt just kept going. And coming back to the caution, uh, Ramsey Cockner, ooh, got stuffed into the wall and went a lap down, so uh, Cockner is going to be back with the field. Brian Gallagher and a couple cars up front uh, take their cars into the pits, so that's going to put Barbara Burt in charge of the field on the restart with Andy Lambert in second place, who move up into the top five. Uh, that's Alex Phillips, Kuga Hakai, and Louis Ballard round out the top five, but Barbara Burt up front holding her own. Andy Lambert, that's a bit of a surprise up there. Uh, Alex Phillips trying to make a move around, uh, but he is not going to be able to do so, and Andy Lambert's going to hang on to second place, at least for the time being. But Barbara Burt, wow, this is very impressive from her. And here's Ike Durbin running in 27th place after pitting under that last caution. He's going to take it four wide going into turn one. Alexa Lake, Duncan Cobb, Tom Wilson, and Ike Durbin all go four wide, and they make it work. Ike Durbin up to 24th place after that move, and he's been slicing through the field like a bad racing movie after that last caution. Uh, he made that pit stop there, and that set him way back in the field. Here's Barney Ward, who's been running pretty aggressively. Oh, Kuga Hakai, Gaspar D'Souza, Barney Ward get together. And Ward didn't take too kindly that, and he doors D'Souza going into turn number two. Now, I think it's a bit early to race this hard, but uh, I guess as long as you're not taking out cars and causing cautions, it's okay. But don't expect any flowers from Gaspar D'Souza after this one. Here's John Jefferson having a pretty strong run uh, with Oceanic Airlines on this car. Oceanic Airlines, this is a B2B deal with Stefan's Racing. Uh, this is how they got their equipment over, and oh, there goes Alina Lazareva spun around, and no caution. No caution, even though Jefferson slams on the brakes, and let's see what happened there. It looked like D'Souza, Lazareva, and Atkins were all going for the same piece of real estate. Jefferson checks up thinking there's going to be a caution, but no chance. Uh, as uh, Lazareva spun off the racing line, there's quite a bit of rear-end damage on that car, but aside from that, the 59 looks okay. Um, yeah, she should be fine, and no, uh, no debris or anything on the racing line, so we're going to stay green. Here's Alex Phillips, uh, who just took the lead back from... Uh, Barbara Burt, and he's reporting a vibration in that number 71 car that's been getting progressively worse over the past few laps. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he brought that car into the pits, and yep, there he goes. Alex Phillips takes the lead, but unfortunately a vibration is going to be his undoing. It would turn out to be a loose wheel on the number 71 car, and he would lose several laps in the pits getting that changed. Uh, really tough break for Alex Phillips, the pole sitter here today. Here's uh, Lewis Jones, and this is a pretty good battle in the lower midfield. You see all these cars running in a huge gaggle. Here's Lewis Jones racing Kurt Pliskin. He's going to get into Pliskin and send him up the track. There's Daniel Sharp, who manages just barely to miss him. Really, str uh, really strung out back here, but uh, this is a pretty big group of cars running. Corridovos is back there. He pit under the last caution, but just has been unable to work his way through the field. Duncan Cobb. Uh, loose wheel for the number 79 car. He's going to bring that car into the pits, and uh, that's going to be the end of his good run. He was running in 21st place. Barney Ward, Gaspar D'Souza. These two can't seem to get away from each other, but we're going to go four wide again. 
And it's going to work again with Juvenal and Elias on the bottom there as uh, Barney Ward's dropping back fairly rapidly. Uh, I don't think anything's wrong with that car. He just got that car out of line. Uh, Barney Ward and Gaspar D'Souza, man, they just keep going at it. We're going to get some lap traffic here with James Hewitt and Kyle McWalla, who were several seconds off the pace and being slightly annoying back markers, as you can see there, McWalla holding up Hakai. But Louis Ballard has come out of nowhere to go up to second place. He got around uh, Brian Gallagher there, and Ballard, who's been easily the weakest of the three Manicor cars, is looking very strong here today. Uh, really trying to make a run for the lead, it looks like. Uh, but Brian Gallagher is going to say, oh no, you don't, and he's going to shuffle him back to second place. Uh, Ballard up in the marbles. He's probably going to lose third here, too, to Andy Lambert. And, uh, there goes Lambert on the inside, who's also having a very strong run in that 34 car. Haven't really seen much of him this year. Uh, but Brian Gallagher is going to take the lead back from uh, Barbara Burt, and here comes uh, Vinny Focasato going a lap down for the first time. Uh, really kind of surprised he stayed on the lead lap that long. Uh, but, oh, Barbara Burt not taking too kindly to lap traffic, I guess. Well, she did stuff uh, Ramsey Cockner into the wall, and Focasato did not have any of that. Look at that block that Focasato is throwing on the 366. Oh, man. Andy Lambert, though, having a very strong run up here in second place now, and uh, there's some questions as to whether or not he's going to stay in this 34 car, uh, considering he has his own team that's in the promotion zone and lights, but he has told uh, Dave Rogers, the principal for uh, ROG Motorsports, that yes, he will be staying at this team, and he plans to stay at, in the 34 camp. Lambert's teammate Blackwater, however, not having a great run, and that's going to make it worse as she runs over Joe Craig and Craig goes up the wall. That's going to take Blackwater out of the race very early on. She will be the first retirement of the race, and it just... Same exact thing that happened with McWella and Hewitt. Maybe there's some uh, moisture on the track there, but uh, Craig would actually keep going once they right that car. Uh, suspension and roof were not damaged nearly as much as we go on board with Blackwater, who was fourth in the championship coming into this race, and unfortunately I think that this is going to derail her already fragile championship hopes as uh, she goes out of the race fairly early on uh, here at Rockingham, and uh, under caution, Brian Gallagher leads the entire field down pit road, but looks like the 77 of Hugh Hakai took only two tires, and he's going to lead the field uh, out of the pits and to the green flag. So Kyuga Hakai, who's been nowhere all season, I believe his best finish is a 16th at Phoenix, is uh, leading this race, and granted, he's had quite a bit of bad luck throughout the uh, the season, like at Chicago and 8 Bowl, where he was running up, up uh, in the top 15 when he had issues, but unfortunately it looks like he's not going to hold the lead for long as uh, Louis Ballard's up there, Akio Gifu making a surprise appearance, Barbara Burt, but good to see Kyuga Hakai up at the front. He's been overshadowed by his teammates all year, H.J. Wheat Farmer and Duncan Cobb, so good to see Kyuga Hakai get his moment in the spotlight as Brian Gallagher had a pretty slow pit stop. He dropped to 7th on the restart, but he's already up to 5th place, and he's clawing his way towards the front as Kyuga Hakai struggled there, but Brian Gallagher firing like a missile towards him, like he was shot out of a cannon there. And uh, Alex Phillips has been struggling quite a bit since uh, he lost a few laps, and oh my goodness, that was a blown turn. If you're going to blow that turn any harder, you better take it out to dinner first, as... Uh, he just took out Scott Wallen, and he's pushing that car. He is upset at something that Scott Wallen did. I'm not sure. Let's uh, go on board and take a look as... Wow. Wow, that was that was pretty bad. Uh, Wallen checked up. Looks like he got up into the marbles, but Phillips just had a huge run on the bottom, and... Out of all this mess, Akio Gifu managed to take the lead, and, he, and uh, the 466 is going to lead the field uh, back to the green flag. Now, Akio Gifu, uh, the chronic bridesmaid, three of the last four races has finished in second place. Uh, I believe it was second... No, two out of the last three, my bad. That was uh, second place at uh, Chicago, a second place at April, and a ninth place at Road Atlanta, so the 466 on a hot streak, 
and looking to continue here as uh, that car leads here at Rockingham. So hopefully we can see a great run out of that. Ben Atkins uh, brings his car into the pits. Unfortunately, that's going to be uh, multiple laps down for the number five car as the uh, tire went down. As here's Louis Ballard taking a look on the inside of the 466. This might be a pass for the lead as these two have just completely separated themselves. Uh, 466 gets up into the marbles, and that's going to be the lead for Louis Ballard, who's having a stellar run, has really done not not a lot all season, and when he has, he's had very bad luck in that uh, car. Now here's the championship leader, uh, Louis Ballard's teammate, running in 13th place, having a decent showing. Uh, he's kind of been between 20th and 13th all week, so... Uh, Ike Durbin just trying to salvage a good run. He really has not come to grips with this track as well as he has with some of the others. Uh, but still, it, it's looking like he's trying to minimize his losses as H.J. Wheat Farmer has been up near the front. He's running in fifth place right now and uh, looking to actually gain some ground on Ike Durbin for once. And it looks like this is going to be the case here today. Uh, Ike Durbin trying to minimize his problems as the championship uh, competitors managed to stay just in front of him, as that's the case here with Gaspar D'Souza, who's actually got away from Barney Ward for once, and he's running just in front in uh, 10th place, doing a pretty good job in this number 12 car, uh, battling with Barry Juveno there, as now we've got a battle for the lead, as this side-by-side -side running has gotten uh, Brian Gallagher up, and they go three wide for the lead, as uh, Ballard hangs on, but Gallagher's going to slot into second place on the inside, and Trying to go three wide again, 466 taking a look, and this is four cars battling for the lead, and we got three of them side by side. This is some great racing up front, as it uh, looks like 466 trying to make a move on the inside there, uh, but Gallagher is going to take the lead back and pull away just a little bit, but the field would reel him in, and we go three wide again with uh, the 466 of Akio Gifu taking the lead. Uh, looks like Gallagher is going to run wide a bit. Uh, here comes Ian Elias, who we haven't talked about all day. Uh, still running up near the front. We've got some lap traffic, which this three-wide racing has really dragged up uh, the 70 and the 566. So now we've got a six-car battle for the lead here uh, with just about 30 laps to go as the 466 falls back to sixth place. Uh, Ike Durbin now running up near the top 10. He's slowing down. He's He's got a problem. He's got a puncture on that car. So Ike Durbin championship leader is uh, going to lose some ground here in the championship as uh, he's trying to get that car back to the pits, trying to let people go by, and he's going to have a good opportunity there. Yeah, he gets it into the pits safely. Uh, there's some damage on the right side of that car. I think he might have slapped the wall at some point, and uh, tire rub being reported on that two car, so yep, that, that'll do it. Uh, right front flat tire on the two car is going to take him out of contention as Kyle McWilla, who's just kind of been soldiering around out there with a damaged car. That's going to be the undoing of him as he goes out of the race with just about 20 laps to go as the engine lets go. Uh, he'll park it on the apron, but that's not going to draw a caution, and hopefully this isn't the last we see of Kyle McWilla as they've been giving Clay Gibson some uh, seat time in their PCC Europe car. Here's a guy we haven't talked about much all day. Preston Bell running in 10th place. This is actually the worst running of the Steffens racing cars, and that is a feat, as this team is well into relegation, and they really need a good run like this to stay within uh, relevance in the relegation promotion talks. As uh, Speaking of promotion and relegation, here's Ben Worthington, whose uh, team Lucas Motorsports is struggling mightily. I believe they're last in the standings. And he's running in 17th place, really just doing all he can to keep his team within the fight as uh, Scott Wellen and Joe Craig were both involved in accidents today. Uh, Scott Wellen there getting ready to go another lap down to his teammate, but Ben Worthington just doing all he can in this number six Conquest Ford, uh, trying to stay out of trouble. As Alexa Lake, another driver trying to stay out of trouble, she's running up in 20th place, doing a fantastic job. As uh, I know she has oval experience, and she had a fourth place at that Paris circuit, but this car, she she clawed and fought her way up into the top 20 with a Matthews Motorsports team car, and that is a feat. Uh, she's doing quite well in that car, as uh, we've got some lapped interference with just a few laps to go here. 
about seven laps to go at this point, and we've got Ike Durbin who is trying to get his lap back, and uh, Ryan Gallagher is just going to let it happen, but here comes Akio Gifu trying to make a move and capitalize on the 49 car getting held up there, as looks like Ballard is going to hang up with there, and looks like we've lost touch with 4th, 5th, and 6th, and they've kind of disappeared, but Akio Gifu making a move now on the inside, but he's not going to be able to get the run, and Brian Gallagher is going to stay up front. Uh, Lewis Jones reporting that he lost the brakes on the 81 car. He's coming into the pits pretty hot. Yeah, he's uh, yeah he missed the pit speed limit. He's going to try and make his pit stall there, and he's going to slide right through it, he, and to make matters worse, he's going to stall the car on pit road. Uh, Ramsey Cockner trying to stay out of the way, and oh my goodness. Kale Burnfart Jr., what are you doing? Caution comes out with just five laps to go. I guess he really needed that caution, Kale Burnfart Jr. did, as uh, Ramsey Cockner was just an innocent victim, four laps down, just trying to stay out of everyone's way, and Burnfart Jr. comes along and spins him out, and we're going to have a one-lap shootout because of that. So here comes uh, Brian Gallagher with a lapped car between him and his nearest challengers. Uh, that's Ballard, but Akio Gifu making a move. Akio Gifu tired of trying to be the tired of being the bridesmaid trying to make a move for the win here as he gets a run on the inside but that's going to stall out once he gets alongside Ike Durbin there and it looks like it's going to be clear sailing for Brian Gallagher as Gallagher rounds through turn three coming through turn number four here entering turn four and Brian Gallagher is going to take it I believe this is his second win of the PCC Cup Series season here at Rockingham. Taking a look at the rest of the results, Akio Gifu has to settle for second again. This is his third second place in four races, as Louis Ballard holds on to third. Ian Elias, fourth place, very good run for him. Mark Burt rounds out the top five. H.J. Wheat Farmer, Kyuga Hakai, finally gets the top ten that he's been searching for, as John Jefferson, Barry Juveno, Preston Bell all finish in the top 16, and that's going to do Stefan's Racing wonders in the promotion relegation battle. Barbara Burt, 10th place. Andy Lambert hangs on to finish 11th. Not the top 5 or 10 he was looking for, but still a very strong run. Nicholas Corradovos does well to get 12th. Gaspar D'Souza is 13th. Barney Ward, 14th. Ben Worthington, top 15 run for that team. They really need it. As uh, Tom Wilson and Cale Burnfart Jr. come home 17th and 18th. Alexa Lake on debut, 19th place in the Matthews Motorsports team car. And Greg Woodard rounds out the top 20. I'm looking at the point standings now, Ike Durbin's lead over Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer has dropped to only 19 points. Brian Gallagher up to third in the championship on account of this win. Gaspar D'Souza fourth. Barbara Burt up to fifth. Kelly Blackwater, after finishing last, drops to sixth place. Mark Burt seventh. Uh, John Jefferson is up to eighth place. Tom Delgado had a very miserable run. So did Sapphire Anderson. They're both ninth and tenth in the standings. James Hewitt out of the top ten in eleventh place. Duncan Cobb twelfth. Uh, Ian Elias tied for 12th at 13th, uh, Ben Atkins 14th, Louis Ballard 15th, Tom Wilson 16th, them separated by two points. Nicholas Cordovo 17th, Lenny Jacobs who hasn't run the past two races, hope he's feeling better after that incident at 8th uh, Bowl is 18th. Uh, Akio Gifu making an appearance in the top 20 for the first time all season, good job for him. And Andy Lambert rounds out the top 20 in the 34 car. And finally, looking at the team standings, there's not much that's really changed here. Double B Motorsports has moved up to third place, jumping over Team Ben Atkins. Clayson Enterprises has jumped over Australian Motorsports up to sixth. And Stefan's Racing has clawed their way out of relegation to sit 11th, the final team to stand at the end of the season. Which puts Accelerator Motorsports, Zach Tech Motorsports team, and Lucas Motorsports in the relegation zone.